When you're getting your drone, one of the things that you fear the most is probably flying over water. But talk and thoughts are cheap. Let's just try and fly it out and I'll show you how uncomplicated it is. And you actually only need to trust the technology. If you run into problems, and <laughs> I might already jinx the video as it is right now, but the most plausible reason why this would ever go wrong is because you either do something stupid or that the technology fails. In the last case, if uh, the te technology fails, TJI will replace the drone for you. But let's uh, fly out and uh, test out uh, flying over water in real life. And as you probably noted while I spoke, the home point was updated and this is really important. That's the first step that you need to take into account. Make sure that your home point is located somewhere on the shore before taking off. So in case you run into issues, losing the connection to the drone, it will return safely to the return to home position. So let's just fire up the drone here and see if we can avoid colliding with the branches and stuff here. So basically, it goes without saying that uh, if you are flying over water, there's of course certain conditions that you need to be aware of. Today there's absolutely no wind, so I can very easily fly here in the direction that I want. But let's say that it was a strong wind, then a really, really good advice is that of course that you head out against the wind, because then the drone needs uh, significantly less power when it needs to return, which could be a good thing if you run into problems. Also make sure to minimize the amount of time that you fly over water so you have plenty of, plenty of battery to make it home. Oh, look at this, look at this. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why water is so beautiful, is that when you're flying here, there's a mirror blank surface. Okay, there's actually a third reason why you could uh, fall out of the sky when you're flying over water, but that can also happen over land, and that is if you crash into a bird. Hey, come on, fool. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and in that case, you just need to climb. Not if it has hit you, but if birds are trying to attack the drone, just climb. That will normally avoid this risk. One of the things that has been discussed a lot in the different forums is that if you fly too close to the water surface, then that will confuse the sensors. You hear out there that you need to fly over water to be safe at least 10 meters above the sea level. And this is because if you look up in the user manual, that will tell you that 10, the bottom sensors are actually within 10 meters and down. So let's test that theory and hopefully we will not lose the drone. One thing that is it that makes it really, really exciting when you're flying close to the ground is that if you flick it into sport mode. But be aware, any obstacle avoidance that is available on a drone is not available if you do sport mode. And here you have a slight chance that the drone will drop into the sea if you don't compensate with the altitude. But it does make the footage look a lot better if you're speeding up. Let's just try and repeat it the other way here. So, so it's actually, yeah, yeah, you can be on the safe side and you can fly in 10 meters height. And of course you need to be careful when you do this. Let's just try and put oh, one meter. I don't think the altitude reading here is right. So, no, it's not. You can see this pole, this is, a, is more than one meter. So we can just put the gimbal here, in this position. So downward, okay. So now we are getting downward readings here. Water surface is clearly messing with the sensors, but use common sense, it's not dropping out of the sky unless you fly it into the water. So now we are four meter above the surface. So, let's fly forward here. You can see the sensors are not even reacting on this. Actually, the height indicator says that it's minus 2.6, so there is some sort of confusion going on here. Altitude measurements are clearly way off, but this has not necessarily something to do with the bottom sensors, as both pressure and GPS C coordinates is included in this calculation. And remember, I'm flying in sport mode now. I'm actually flying pretty close to the surface. Say, okay, I don't dare going further down. Okay, there's also no reason to be stupid. Actually, the sensor prevents me from going further down. So see, if I, even if I press this one, two and a half meters. So, now there's a boat out there. So if I punch forward now, 
I need to be careful that I don't touch the water. Oh, this is too much. <laughs> So you can fly close to the water, but of course you need to be careful and you need to stop doing stuff that is stupid. So let's just check out the boat. So let's just fly. Let's put it in Cine. See if we can follow them. And maybe do like a nice pan here. Ah, how nice is that? What? So now we're flying manually in parallel with the boat. Let's just try and slide back here. And let them ride into the sunset. So, so my father sneaked in on me. <laughs> This is very, very beautiful. I love visiting this place here. It's really, really nice. So we can maybe ride a little bit on these waves here. We'll give a little bit more action here. So, now we're closing down to the surface. And let's just go, go. You can see uh, if there's waves in the water, that introduces significantly more action. Look at this scene. <laughs> How beautiful is that? So we just turn over here. Don't want to collide with the, this one. We just pass the boat. So I think that gives you an idea that uh, it's actually possible to fly over water and do all sorts of nice stuff without uh, risking your drone. So prunes from my father's uh, fruit trees. You know what? The only thing that's worse than uh, finding a worm inside one of these is to find half a worm. <laughs> but this one's fine. <laughs> mm, really good. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 